he is. He's flying back up now. See him on the branch? Oh no, you just saw it. Do you see it now? I without my binoculars. Oh, but have a look for your binoculars. Oh, look, whoosh, look right across there. Can you see it, Joel? What does it look like? What bird is it? Each year, over one weekend in January, the RSPB invites bird lovers across the country to spend an hour recording the numbers and species of birds visiting the nation's gardens. I can see you. I can. The information gathered provides valuable insight into the well-being of our feathered friend. I can see a blue tip right the way through the trees. I can see its yellow tummy and its blue head. Look right up there, look, what can you see? What are they, right at the top? Since 2000, schools and youth groups in villages, towns and inner cities have had their own version of this scheme, the Big Schools Birdwatch. Certain species are more commonly seen in school grounds than in people's gardens, which illustrates to us that school grounds are a really important habitat to certain species, for example, starlings and black-headed gulls. Big Schools Birdwatch takes place at the end of January. It spans the week before and after Big Garden Birdwatch. Schools can use their local park, and indeed lots of schools in city centres actually do that. Last year we were involved with breathing spaces and some community projects, so that has inspired us to join in with the Bird Society and start looking at birds in more detail. The children mostly come from these flats all around very big flat concrete areas that they don't really have much knowledge of nature at all. So it's really good to have projects come in just to get them interested in seeing what's in front of them. We have a nice school garden which is being redeveloped at the moment but because of staggered playtimes it can be very noisy most of the time so it's easier for us to use our community areas. The council has made a little area available where we have to ask for permission to use it and then they will do a risk assessment and make sure it's clear for the children to use. The bird populations around inner city schools are equally as important to the survey as those from schools like Woolenwick, with grounds better favoured by birds. We're in an urban setting, but we're very fortunate at Willenwick with our school grounds, and we've been able to make a nature trail through the various components of it, through a spinney, wildflower meadows, there's hedgerow bordering a field, and then right at the other end of the school, we've made a habitats trail where we particularly feature on um, log piles for mini beasts and homes for birds and so on. Today, um, the whole school's taken part in the Big Schools Bird Watch, right from the nursery children, right up to year two. OK, you guys are going to be helping to do the Big Schools Bird Watch. But first of all, I've got a practice activity. The children are really excited to be able to be part of something so big, so that their small piece of information is going to help the RSPB. Put your hands up if you think it was the blackbird. They're people that the, the children know. It's an organisation that's respected and accredited and the parents recognise it too. Put your hands up if you think it was the blue tit. Let me show you which one it was. <laughs> Fantastic. First, living things. How are birds all the same? What do they do the same? Lily? They all eat fruit. We only had one class taking part, but what we could do is involve the whole school, which we have done once before, where we had a whole school project and all our displays and all our assemblies were all based around the project. They have tails. They all have tails, you're right. Yes, so they can balance when they're walking. Excellent. Well, we've been looking at birds and we've been talking about them, comparing their size their colour and where we might find them. And recently we have been writing rhyming poems about birds. I saw a sparrow 
sitting on a barrow. We'd absolutely recommend ensuring kids are familiar with some of the more common birds that they're likely to see. We'd also setting up bird feeders at least a couple of weeks in advance so that birds recognise the school grounds as a place where they can access feed so there'll be plenty to see when, when the kids take part in Big School's bird watch. We go to hang them up on the trees and this is what is made from bird seeds. We pick, we pick lard to make the food. We're going to hang them up in the tree so the birds can eat. And we've already got some over there because a couple of us, we made some within cartons. If we didn't make any of these, they might get hungry. And kind of hard. everybody um, cares about hungry. birds. That's it, fabulous. Let me see. Do you think that's enough for the birds now? There are a variety of class activities to help children identify the species they are likely to see during the bird watch. These also provide links to other curriculum subjects, such as mass literacy and IT. Now, to make it all stick together, we're going to use lard. Squeeze it in. I want you to get the bird food in there so you really, really have to use your fingers. Oh, how does that feel? Look and see if you can see. You can see! Squeeze it down, that's it. Come on, Miss Muscles. Wow, fantastic. And a little bit more, there's a little tiny bit more in there. The children across the school did similar activities, obviously differentiated according to their age and ability. For example, in nursery they made masks and blacked out their windows and so on, but they will have done that in smaller groups for a shorter length of time, supported by a grown-up. See if you can find out whether it's yellow. It's a blue tip. By year two, they can do the same activities independently. And the children also made bird snappers and masks from various animals. It's a snapper. You snap it. And they're able to access the computers independently, the RSPB Youth site, and play some of the games on that. And we're trying to look for the right bird. Yeah. It's that one. We're clicking on one to see if it writes, and this picture don't come up, we've got it wrong. Is that style? We're off to see the birds. Let's go. We ask schools to watch for one hour. Obviously, the whole class watching for one hour wouldn't work terribly well, so we suggest that maybe the hour is split up into shifts and each group takes, takes five or ten minutes and then collating the results together at the end. We formed small groups so that we could go out and be very quiet because when we went out as a whole class, it was a bit too noisy and we frightened the birds away. And we were collecting data. Um, each child had a clipboard and had a tally sheet and they ticked off when we saw the birds. The next one says pigeon. Can we see a pigeon? Over there on the roof. Do you know how many you can see? Mornings are sometimes the best time to watch birds because birds are more active in the mornings. Lovely. Can we see a robin at the moment? No. no. Sometimes schools find that after play, looking out over on the playground, there are lots of birds there picking up bits from playtime, so that may well be a good time to watch birds. That's a baby uh, magpie. That, that's actually a starling there. That's a bit like a starling. That's one of them red birds, isn't it? Yeah, that's a chaffinch. Chaffinch. Yeah. One chaffinch, that's right. That's well done. Part. The children can count birds only that land on the trees, the feeders or the ground. So they mustn't count birds that just fly over our space. And also they must only count the largest number that they, they can see at any one time. And the way we explain this is if you see a bird and then it flies away and then two come back, you can't be sure it wasn't the same bird that came back. Four birds that we've seen, so four pigeons, starling, chaffinch, another um, blue tit, five blue tits, five blue tits. 
The children can observe birds from their classroom windows, they can black out their classroom windows leaving little slots to form a mini bird hide in their classroom or they can go outside and observe the birds. Both approaches work equally well. That's a blackbird, so tick, one tick for blackbird. Next one, magpie. Mmm, mmm for magpie. Lovely, thank you. Oh, what's that? That was the black bird. Did you see it? Where? Well, black bird, that's the top one. So the top one is black bird, so tick another black bird. Okay. Let's move on then. Round here. Oh, that's a black bird. That's a black bird. In year two, we went to the bird hide and we're peering through the gaps in the bird hide into the spinney. The children went out in groups of 12 in pairs, so one person had the binoculars, one person was doing the, the tallying. A robin. You see in the corner of our meadow, can you see the bird? No. What do you think it is? I think it's a tit bird. In the bird hide, I think there are 12 bird signs up of the key birds that they might see. I see a bird. I see a bird. I see a bird. Blackbird. Do you know what bird that was? Blackbird. It was, it was coloured black. That bird was actually called a carrion crow. We don't have them. Well, we saw lots of pigeons, magpies, blackbirds and so on. I was quite surprised to see 16 house sparrows on the field. It's really important that schools feed back their results, whatever they are, because if lots of schools in an area didn't see any birds, it would indicate to us perhaps there was an issue that, that we needed to be aware of. We don't want them to think that they're not important to us if they haven't seen anything. Pigeon. Blackbird. A oh. crow. Robin. Robin. Magpie. Magpie. And seagull. There are two ways that schools can send their results back to us. The first way is using the paper form provided in the teacher's packs. The second way is to use our online facility, which has been designed to be used as a class activity. So what was the first bird we saw? Uh, uh, oh, a black bird. bird. How many blackbirds did we see? Now, the first group saw two, and the second group four. What number is in between two and four? Three. So click on there until that says three. Good. What do you think I need to click on now? We've put everything on. What do you think we need to click on, Akshay? Submit results. Good job. Do you want to come and click on that for me? Once children have submitted their results to us, they're able to access and make a range of interactive graphs using their results, which is a good starting point to other data handling work related to the Birdwatch itself. It says now interactive charts, and we can look at a bar chart or a pie chart, a pictogram, or a block graph, and we can choose which data, and we can use the data from my class here, the ones we just put on. It says results. Deeper learning happens when children are given the opportunity to experience, find out, do for